Hello and welcome back to another video of generative AI art and in this video I want to show you well basically what we have in the screen so in the previous video we generated you no know, the images we work a little bit basic concept of, of scaling and here I just want to show you hopefully it will be something not too long a little bit how to do this black magic so basically imagine that we're starting you now this is our original image that we generated in the previous video we pass <coughs> another model to obtain this pixelation and then with from this pixelation we want to obtain a reconstruction of the image something that we see very frequently you now many in videos in the internet many websites so shows this so let me show you how to do this and i want to point out look at that we have an extra leg there so that is you now related to the denoising that we have a, a high value value so we're work, going to work in this so hopefully we're going to address that but before that again i would like to show you another benchmarking now so so far the first benchmarking that we did with this one now we have a square image aspect ratio 1024 1024 and we saw here that uh basically forge was the fastest one we compare different <coughs> different user interface and we have this model okay and basically we have a positive prone and negative prone as i mentioned i don't like to use too much negative prone the positive is very strong then in the second benchmarking we were in this one again forge it was the fastest one okay um we use a new library but now we change the aspect ratio of the image and this is very important okay because it's not only the square aspect ratio we have many aspect ratios and scenes can change in your composition so here we have we have this aspect ratio but it's still forge is the best one fantastic uh results i have to say and we work you know on a little bit of scaling in this case so fantastic results very introductory but it works so you can follow now the same workflow and now in this case we're going to work another benchmarking but now we're changing the aspect ratio you know so instead of having the white screen like in this case we go for the <coughs> portrait format so we have same user interface uh forge automatic 11 11 which are siblings then config ui focus and now we have here our positive prone i'm not using any negative prone and we have the timing here again we can see that forge is the fastest one pay attention that probably you're going to see here that focus is fastest however if you have used focus that i love and it is the tool that i use for generating one shot images uh focus doesn't have this aspect ratio you know focus have some pretty fine aspect ratio within those that you can choose that one doesn't you don't have it available so for focus i use this one it's more image in the here in this distance so that's why it's faster so intuitive force is, st is still no, it's the, it's the fastest one. And no need to say that the memory management is way much, much better. So here, another example. So just to give <clears throat> another reason why to use Force is fantastic. Uh, we changed also the model. There is another video that we need to talk. We need to talk a lot about models, especially in scaling. They are very, very important. So <coughs> that I would like to address here also. It's just to make it clear why I'm using this four interface, why I don't use one single one. So as I say, focus, I love this one. And this is the one that I use for single, single shot images. I need an image. I just open this one. I don't need to think it have good models. It have all the styles. It is optimized. It is fast. Okay. It's fast, it's faster than comfy UI and automatic and probably I can say it is in the same level of, of Forge. However, it is lacking a few options, a few extensions and so on. But for me, for generating images, that is fantastic. That is what, what I use. Then I move to Automatic 11.11 and Forge. And these two I use to get more control over the image, more advanced options. So basically, we talk about control net. We're seeing now also scaling but there are many more extensions and actions that you have available that you can do more with this action so this is a little bit more advanced options but here you i use it when i really need it okay so if i have an image 
and I need to do something or I need to do something very specific and move here, but otherwise I stay in focus. And then Comfy UI. <coughs> I have to say that it's fantastic. I love it and I love it because you have this kind of a spaghettification when you do your workflows and so on. And I use Comfy UI basically to do <coughs> very complex workflows. Okay, workflows that are not implemented in Focus and they are not implemented in Automatic 11.11. Automatic 11.11, force you will have this uh, predefined uh, workflows and you cannot get outside that bubble, let's say. Instead, in Comfy UI, you can do whatever you want. So I use it for those very specific you now uh, <clears throat> workflows that I need to do crazy stuff. But also Comfy UI, you can get access to advanced features that you don't have in any, <coughs> in any of these two user interface. Okay, so this is how it works, how it works. So, just to repeat it, most of the time, focus, generate a single image. Then if I need more control, more advanced stuff, since like ContourNet or upscaling, I go to Forge or Automatic 11 and then Comfy, Comfy UI is just to create my own crazy workflows or go to get access to uh, advanced features, something, experimental features, something that is not available in the others. So this is an interesting case. So look at my positive prompt. So there you start to see the creativity and those styles, talking about styles, all these keywords and styles and so on. So what I want to say next, just, just to compare now the three images here. So we have Automatic 11.11, um, Forge, they give similar images, then Comfy UI and Focus. So they give different composition. We're using, by the way, we're using the same library, the same set number and so on, but they still give something different, but these two, they are, <clears throat> they, 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 they tend to give same composition. But by looking at this, I have to say the one I like the most, personally speaking, it is Focus. Okay, so you can see here, focus, just put it and you get it. Then comparing between these two, I would say Comfy UI is the other I like the most. And then the one that I like the least is, is Automatic 11.11, Forge. And the basically the reason is because the years here, look at that outside the hell. But so that I don't like, but in any case, it's up to you. But all these images are fantastic. And just to point out about the years here that outside the, uh, uh, the helmet, that you might go, this is prompts, just to come back to prompts, extremely important. You might come to your prompts and start to play with the negative prone and so on, trying to correct that. Remember, <coughs> positive prone is very strong. So look at that here. I just by adding this extra more here, ears inside the helmet, everything has, has been fixed. Okay, I don't have the whole body shot, but I fix everything or also remember that you have a signal number. So here I fix it. So probably just change your fixed number and one of those generations will be uh, will be inside the, the, the helmet. But pretty much it's a cherry pick case just to show you no know, sins going wrong and how to fix it and so on. So hopefully you have now an idea. Okay, so this I think will be our last benchmarking. Let's see if I do more benchmarking. So <clears throat> just wanted to show you the reason and why I'm loving Forge. So at this point, let's move to this case, okay, in Forge. And uh, let's see how we can get to these results. Okay, we're back. We're here in our user interface. As I say, we have a lot to talk in another video regarding all these options that I will stock in, then remember that you have here extension settings and you can do things there. Then here you have many models. You have to talk about this one, very important. I have many models you need. Luckily I have plenty for space so I can put all these models. So there will be another video dedicated to that. But in this case, we want to work in the image. So remember, you have this one PNG info, so you can get your image that, let me get it here, I put it here. And remember that in the images generated in <clears throat> Comfy UI and Automatic 11.11 Force, you have all this metadata embedded. Uh, Focus, it doesn't embed the, that me metadata, but it will create an HTML file, so you can get it there. But I think it is more convenient if you have it in the... <clears throat> in the PNG file or JPEG file. So basically we have this one, we move it 
to text to image. So remember here, you start from text and you can generate your image. So uh, let me use the model. And in this case, let's keep using the Jogger now nine. So it's the latest one. You can generate the image. So everything has been predefined. I'm not going to do any <coughs> not scaling. This is just to generate the starting image. Okay. As we did previously, but just to repeat the steps and just to arrive to the result that we want to see, which is this pixelation. Okay. So we can do this pixelation, creating the image text to image or image to image. We're going to work image to image, but I just want to show you, you know, how to change the library and how to use this, this library <coughs> to do the pixelation. Okay, so we have our image here. We're happy. Remember the first time, usually the first time you load, it takes time. So then when you start to run the others will be kind of half that time. And to do the pixelation, I use this library here. I have it is uh, pixel art diffusion. So you can go remember that you have this marketplace here and you can look for that one pixel. This one is the one I use. It's a fantastic library. It is only for Excel, but you have equivalent ones or something similar for SD 1.5, it's up to you. So basically this is what I'm creating, pixelation. I really like this. You know, it reminds me when I was playing a lot of video games like a long, long time ago. So basically I use this one and let me show you the results. So we have the same prompt, same set number, everything. So you should get something similar. So we can generate that image. I changed, so remember that First time when you change models, <clears throat> it will load it. And <clears throat> one of the issues in automatic 11.11 was sometimes that you were changing, probably you experienced that, that you were changing models and sometimes you change models and then you start to get some, let's say bad results or strange results or your results or useless results here. And <clears throat> basically it's, you're not changing that now in Forge. I haven't seen that problem. Actually, I have seen, but the frequency is very, very, very low. And there you go. So we have our image here. Okay, fantastic. Look at that here. We have an extra LED. And remember that that is related. There are many things that can be related. <coughs> <coughs> but you can fix that. Also, you can change your SIG number. Okay, remember that you have a SIG number. Let me add a one there. <coughs> And let's see what happened with our new generation. So it would be different, but hopefully now we're going to have those four legs. And there you go, as I say, four legs, so changing the number, there is no problem. So now it's facing the other way. So remember that positive prone, and then you can say facing to the left, to the right, and you can come get closer now to the, to the image that you want. So this is to show you what we're doing. You can now take this image, pass it to image to image here. You have the icons and so on, but let me go here. <coughs> and I already have the image, okay? So I'm going to drop it here. And I generated this image and look at that. I have five LEDs there and I want to do it just to introduce that error. As I say, remember that <clears throat> you can, uh, you can control that. Okay. You can change seat number and so on. So actually to do this pixelation, let's, this is my starting image. I need to choose the model and now image to image. Okay. Let's change the model to convert that to the pixelation. And remember that we have the, the, the noise in here. Very important, get your dimensions. So here you have, this is, <coughs> <coughs> okay, this is the option you have there to, to get dimensions. Then I have this aspect ratios. This is an extension. So as you can see it in your, uh, in your installations, because it's just an extension. So go just extension and install that. So you look for aspect ratio, that's all. So this is a degeneration that we're going to do. And let's start with 0 0.75. Okay, so this is actually the case that we're going to do. And let me generate. So 
image to image, we're changing style, we're not doing any scaling. So to mention something about this one that I like to do this test with all my models to see which one is the model that be better fit what I want to do. So you, you can have models that will do pixelation, anime, cartoons, photorealism, 3D rendering and whatever. So you start to get those models, okay, and test to see if you get when you do the image to image the decided result. So see what we have. So kind of is pretty far from this one. And remember what I mentioned that image to image also you need to drive this with your prone. Here we didn't put any prone, so it tried to reconstruct something, which makes sense, but it's not exactly as the same image. So in the previous video, I showed you that you have these options that you can interrogate the image to get the description and let's do the same. So sometimes <coughs> you see many online tools that they don't ask you anything when you do image to image because this one, they are doing this one, they are interrogating and I have to say this, this is fantastic. This is crazy. So you have two options here, this and this. I think this is the best one. The first time that you use it also will take a while because it needs to then load another checkpoint along a library where <clears throat> it will get all that information and so on just to do the interrogation. <coughs> so we click there and now let's wait for our prompt. And there you go. We have the prompt as you can read it there. Well, we did it in the previous video, so pretty much it's the same, but it's very good prompt. It's very accurate. So I can go here, generate, and let's do it. Generate, let's get the new image. By the way, as I change my style, so pixelation. So probably you, 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 you can take some of this world like digital rendering and whatever, okay, you don't need it, so. But in any case, I think it's not going to change much, but be careful about that because you can get some, email, some, some prompt there that you have like photorealistic, whatever. And actually will show you that this original prompt, you have all these keywords. Okay, but now here we have our final image and this is fantastic. Our four legs, so pay attention. We have four legs here. This is perfect. <coughs> and it's very close to what we have here. So this one, I put this prompt that the one that interrogate the image and I have it here. I have the original prompt is this one, the one that we use to generate the starting image in text to image. Okay. And this tab is this one. And what I was mentioned yeah, that here you have hyper detail, photorealistic, dynamic lighting. This is tough. Doesn't make any sense when you move to pixel to pixelation. So you can erase it. I will leave it, but have that in mind. Okay. So that is part of the styles and prompts and so on that you have to be careful. So let's generate with this one. We're using here now the resolution, now the, uh, <clears throat> the aspect ratio 16, nine. Okay. Wide screen. Then we have this denoising. Remember that is the fantasy, how it will change the whole composition. And well, this is what we have here. Fantastic result. Okay. And from this point, we can work. So actually, uh, uh, let me see, let me increase this one to 0 0.85 because I don't see the, <coughs> the extra lag. <coughs> <coughs> so in the other image, so probably I think I change, uh, maybe, ah, uh, yeah, maybe can be the, oh, the seat number. So look at that. I don't have the, the fixed six number, but just to show you, look at what happened when I increase the denoising and increasing the denoising is more, you want to start to hallucinate more. And look at it now, you have five legs there. So this have a very strong influence in image to image. And let me do here that I want to get the same prompt number, okay? The seat number, sorry. And let me generate this one, okay? So my sample case, no, the case are I prepare, it's pretty much this one, okay? And remember that you can come here, PNG, you have the image, you drop it there, and you're going to get the whole metadata, and then you can transfer that to whatever tab you want. <coughs> and there you go. So this is the image, and you see here that we have the extra leg. Um, voila.
So it is a fantastic result. It's following the image. So remember, this is what is controlling the image. And then according to this value, it's going to add more fantasy. So what I want to show you here is that here, okay, this can be due to many factors, but something important, the noise, but also your seat number. And just to show you that I would change now my seat number and let me put something random and let's see what happens. So sometimes don't, don't go into panic that, okay, you have that extra lead. And let me go and enter here into the negative prone, those really strange prompts that I find really strange, like extra legs, extra limbs, whatever, and you put that. That is really difficult to control, okay? So the best way is having a very good positive prompt, prompt and then, well, try different variations of the image. And see here that we changed the random number and now it's a perfect image, okay? You don't have any more that extra lag. But I would like to go back to that state and let me put it here and just to confirm, to show you. <coughs> we have the extra leg there. So <coughs> important to mention that this case also, I prepare it in purpose, like the ears that sell the helmet and so on. It's preparing purpose to have, to have those defects and to show you how to fix it. And just to show you also that you can take different <clears throat> different routes to, to fix that. You can do in painting, of course, but in this case, I think it will be the most difficult one. But yeah, it can be done with no problem. And we have plenty of videos of in painting. <coughs> oh my God, I have this terrible <clears throat> cold. So hopefully, I hope to get well soon. Okay, so now, Another way to fix this one, remember, it is here, the denoising. So let me reduce the denoise and let me go to 0 0.6, okay? So this has also a very strong influence in the image. So for this kind of test that I'm doing, that I'm pixelating, I need to have a large value to add the pixelation. So if I would recall 0 0.6, it's going to start to look a little bit strange in the sense that it's not going to be that perfect pixelation, but look at that. You didn't have any more that extra let there. Okay, but it's not so nice. It was much better the previous one. And this is what you need to learn how to control. Now I go to 0 0.5 and you will see that the effect of the model that you have here, it is lower and lower and lower. And also the effect of your prom and all the options that you are <clears throat> you are going to put there. <coughs> okay, so now we go 0 0.5 and you start to see that the effect is lower and it will be like that. And so now let me go and just to show you, as you go to 0 0.05, 0, 0 0.05, <coughs> which is a very low value, this will be equivalent like no, no the noise. So if I do this one pretty much, I should get this same image. Okay, so get familiar with this. My advice, as I mentioned previously, and here you have your image, so pretty much very similar, is that uh, try to keep it, okay, using a standard auction without going into very elaborate workflows. Keep it below 0.4. I can guarantee you that it will work with XL models and 1.5 models with no problem. Okay, so this is what we have. And now let me go and let me go back to 0 0.75. <coughs> Let's generate the image. And what we're going to do now is this kind of black magic. So from this, let's go to this. And it should be here. Okay, so it's generating the image. So let me use this image so it's the image with the five legs it's up to you if you want to keep one or change your seat number or whatever to fix that one just to mention another way to fix this is that you have control net so you can put a control net there and the control net will follow this image and then while following this one we'll see okay i cannot add anything there okay so that is a very clever way i love control net to for to do stuff like that so let me drop it drop it here get the dimensions so see that i haven't done any ox scaling and at this point it is the moment that i want to do that miracle you know this transformation so this is entirely <coughs> latent 
uh, latent oxcaling or latent, let's say latent composition because they're not going to do any oxcaling. So basically you keep same dimensions and what you need to do, and you can guess, is that you need to change your model. So now that you have this pixelation, choose another model, and I'm going to show you the difference and the importance of models for oxcaling and doing this latent transformation, no latent space transformations. So let me use Juggernaut 0.9, the one that originally we used, and <clears throat> Let me go here and let's keep this value this size. So remember, if you keep it low, pretty much you are not going to have any effect there. So you need to increase it. So usually values between 7, 7, 7 uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.9 are okay. One is too much, but you can test it. So let me put 0 0.8. <coughs> and see that I'm keeping exactly the same dimensions. I'm not doing any, any change there. And let's see what we have. And voila, there you go. Looks like a miracle. So remember that you have that extra lead that we keep it here from the composition. I did it in purpose, but then it's up to you just to get rid of that. And remember that the image to image, it will be safe here. This is the da, 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 da. And there you go. <clears throat> Fantastic. So basically we want from the pixelation that, let me bring it back, that we went from this, no, it's not that one, to this, <coughs> by simply changing the model, okay? We didn't do any image, so hopefully now we didn't, de we didn't do any, any anything strange, okay? So just change model, that's all. And now at this point, you can get an idea that we can link this with the previous video that we did all the ox scaling and so on to get things realistic. So I'm not going to do all those iterations we did in the previous video, but what I want to do is to show you the influence of different models and why they are so important in general now and for everything they are very important but in particular now for ox scalings you want to get those fantastic results so we use jogger now and now let me change to another model and i already know so look at that i have many models but in this case i think okay this one this is another good model so you can look for that here in cv ai so let me look for uh, jammers were listening. Okay, so <clears throat> so basically, this is, no, it's not that one. It should be jammers were listening. Uh, ta, 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 ta. Uh, 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 okay, <coughs> <coughs> it's this one. Okay, so you need to look for models, the models that best fit fits what you want to do. So in this case, this one gives very good results so let me use it let me go here generate it so this will be the first generation so it will take a little bit longer i want to point out also that some models uh perform different than others so basically sometimes you can run with one model it will perform 15 seconds and then you run with another and it will be 24 seconds okay <coughs> so there is also that that dependency okay i'm, I'm talking about a standard models now the x Excel base because also you have all these lighting models, turbo model, you have LCN that, that will be the model videos that I will talk about that, that they have another performance way much, much faster. But I don't like to use those models to do serious stuff because you will realize that, yeah, they are super fast. You can get images in, in, in six, seven, or even three seconds. That is fantastic. But you will see that you are losing quality, even though you get. 1024, 1024 images, you start to lose quality, okay? You, you don't get the same quality of these images. Of course, you can do the scaling to fix those images, but it's better to do something you know, as the as the highest possible quality. And for me, I have no, no problem with 20, 25 seconds of image generation. Okay, so in this case, I see that it's taking a little bit long loading. I don't know the reason, so let's wait a little bit. Okay, so we have the image. So for whatever reason, it took one minute, 38 seconds. So probably I will, I can click again there and probably will, will be faster. I don't know. So 
Yeah, I remind uh, just to remind you that also in recording, so that can be the the reason of recording. Also, is slowing down since. But this is what I want to compare. We have here Jogger now, and then this realistic model. So if I look at these two images, for me, okay, this is my opinion, uh, my personal opinion. I think this is much, much better. <coughs> and you will see that you will choose different models and you will get different options. So that is the, the, the secret sauce, not doing many things in particular. Ox scaling, you not know, to get so fantastic results that you need to use the right model. And as I mentioned, the reason why I have so so many models that I am experimenting with that, but also I'm merging models. So I have you have that option there, and you can merge models with Lora and so on, you not know, to to get better images. So this is it. We have the image, and at this point. I put it there and happy with this one you can follow the previous workflow to do the ox scaling so we have the same image here and now let's do the ox scaling why not so you can remember you can go move this and do only the ox scaling no the ai ox scaling you can put it there or you can do pure latent space of scaling be careful that that can take can use a lot of memory and also the rules you have to be very, very careful with the rules because if you double this dimension, you know that these models, they don't work very well. If you have uh, the noise is very, very large, it's slow, likely they are going to work well, but be careful about that. But just to, sh to talk about the workflow. So now I'm happy with this image. This composition for me is perfect. So my next iteration, I'm going to reduce this to 0 0.3 because I don't want to, to do a big transformation. I know that 0 0.8 is not going to raise that leg. Luckily, it's going to add a new one. Well, I don't know, <coughs> but that stuff can be fixed. And that can be a cool exercise to fix this with in painting. Actually, yeah, let me see to, to prepare that. <coughs> Okay, so what I want to do this, it is the ox scaling. So remember that you move here and you have the ox scaling and the option I recommend you is the ultimate SD ox scale. So that is an extension that you need to download. And I, what, what, what I would like to do here and I will do, so, okay, put it there, the image, scale from image, and I will go here, very aggressive of scaling of four so this will take some time and let me use a different model so i have been using this one consistently let me use this one okay which is also a good one let me go here this is an ox scaling of four let me go 1024 my tile so i know that this division it will take the width will be like it will take like probably five or six tiles. Okay, remember the larger the better, but also do not exceed the dimensions of the of the model. So likely now this is okay, but I have to say 512 is also okay. But the larger the faster will be because you have less tiles and also it's uh, less likely that you are going to have scenes. We haven't seen that, and as you see scenes, it's clearly you will know what is a scene you now when you have you no know, different tiles and. <clears throat> the union we saw with, within those those tiles, you can visualize that. So put zero here, it uses the same dimension. This is the blur, so this is important value. So this requires a lot of experience now because it can have two functions. Now, if you increase it, it can have an, a function of adding more fantasy to the, the composition, but also the function can be also the opposite. Okay, it will remove features. So it's difficult to control. But usually I like to put a value depending you now of this one. So if I have a large value here, more than 0 0.5, I put here a value 32 or larger. <coughs> For 0 0.38 is okay, but let me go and increase it to 16. Okay, so it will add some blur in the image. And this is the padding how the tiles overlap. And at this point it is okay. So here you have some options you now. So probably chess is the best one. This is talking about how to fi fix sims and you have the options there so in the case you see that but here we're going, not going to see it so at this point it's everything okay remember now also that i like to do at least even if it is image to image and we have pretty much the same composition so we don't need to do many steps i like to do at least 10 so remember that you have this rule kind of here 
multiply this one by this one and then you get plus one and you get the number of, step, of steps that it will actually do. So if I leave it like this, it will do seven steps. I like to do 10, so let me put here 30. So nine plus one, it will do 10 steps. Okay, and let me increase this one also a little bit. And that's all. And well, if you want, you can do batch and so on. And I know I'm not going to put it here. And off you go. <coughs> so if I go here, remember that it first is doing AI aux scaling. It is tiling that space using the auctions that you have in the settings. Then here, <coughs> okay, we have the final canvas is starting from here, the tile size, and it's doing a grid of three times six. So 18 tiles, and then it will do individual tiles. And at this point, we need, we need to wait. That can be time consuming. I have to mention that <clears throat> later we're going to do more advanced videos, but when you have large denoise in here controlling this tiling, Okay, this 18 square can be really tricky. So there are different techniques. So then we're going to start to play with control net and also this blur auction that I just mentioned. And also I mentioned that it's much, much, much easier to control ox scaling using a stable diffusion 1.5. So that is one of the reasons also why, why, why I'm still using 1.5 because it's much, much, much easier to control there. But if you are not doing crazy stuff, you can stay with all the XL models. As I say, well, for <clears throat> for ox scaling, is 1.5 is much better. Also, everything cartoonish, anime is fantastic. It's really, really good. And now also there are some of these models that they can go up to 1024. It, it is crazy, you know, how sense. And the, all this stuff advances really fast. So I'm quite sure that in three months will be there will be new stuff and this stable cascade will be all the lighting will be all and let's see what what we bring in the future so at this point i think uh yeah this will take a while so i will let it run in and let's see what we get at the end of the day so let me put it here here and we will have there the memory and then how things are progressing Okay, we're back. So actually, <clears throat> at one point I have to stop the recording because remember when you're when you're doing this stuff and you are sharing your resources of the GPU will slow down everything. So here I'm recording. I, I forgot to disable disable one action. So I have uh, I had to stop the recording and I hope I fixed the problem. But it was taking a long time. But uh, it doesn't matter. Be careful about that. So here we have the. <clears throat> Of scale image and well let's see uh in our folder so we have here that should be the ox scale just to be sure and there you go you have large resolution this is the previous one okay this is using now the one that we just converted now we didn't do anything and let's compare here Again, so this is the result. And interesting here, you can do this. Look at that here, you have quite ni nice texture. Is you do this when using the jogger now, and it's a little bit strange the texture. Also, you use <coughs> different model scaler, AI scaler. So here I'm using that the R E R C GAN. If you use the ultra or whatever, it will be likely different results, but it's quite quite nice no now you see this much much crispier no you have better resolution okay there is some new information somewhere like the extra leg there okay didn't in purpose but very nice in general textures and everything super 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 crisp super nice and this is basically how you work so now <coughs> to end just want to do a note to show you something because also, it's important. You have the models, but remember that you have LoRa's, and there are many LoRa's that I have here. So you can add some very specific dollars that uh, LoRa's that there are detailers now. For instance, you are working with skins, with eyes, and so on. So you have all these LoRa's. I really like this one. Okay, the <clears throat> this one, and I have the link already 
and <coughs> let me go here and let me put it there so basically it's this and what it will do you put it there and it will add more details okay so there are many many of them so you need to look for them <coughs> and also you need to know how to trigger this one so one of the reasons also like to to use this one because to trigger this when there is no trigger war now sometimes you need to have the trigger war and so on this one it works very well okay no trigger war you just need to add it there so to put it there and let me put there click there and it will add it there then you have the weight there so also you need to read how that lora was prepared sometimes developer recommends to use a lower, lower value i know that one is too strong in this case i would put 0 0.5 but it's up to you zero is disabled and you can combine these loaders by the way so let me go here and for instance uh, let me go <coughs> and at this one also that is one that is detailing and this is interesting as i mentioned sometimes they can have a trigger war so this one have the it has this specific uh, trigger war and it's recommended to use on a strange strain of one so let me add that one and then as we have some nature I have some lotus here so this one is a good one and let me put 0 0.5 as a why this one doesn't require also if I would recall there is no trigger war and actually yeah it is recommended to use one so this is now when it comes to the magic of this upscaling and many things that you start to add all these extra libraries. So remember, Lora is a small model that focuses on something very specific. So in this case, it will add more details and so on. So you have Lora's hyper network, so it's pretty much the same as <coughs> so Lora. Then these are, let's say, negative prone, no textual inversion well not necessarily negative can be also positive and so on. so very very small checkpoint strain for a very specific mission so kind of a lot of a lot as well so let's do this and let me click here and let's see how now it will change this one and yes let me stop it because i uh, i don't want to do ox scaling because otherwise it will be super slow because I'm not sure if if I fix the problem with the GPU because yeah I <coughs> I'm quite sure that I am still using sharing the GPU with the recording application so let me let me stop here okay so finally stop so remember let's go here and and actually, yeah, let me, because you can leave the SD aux scale and you can leave it to one. So would be not exactly the same because, okay, we'll do this, the, <clears throat> this, this pass and it's doing some, <clears throat> some other correction, but it will do the tiling and so on. So it will manage better the, the memory. So it's up to you, but yeah, let, let me disable and click there and let's see what happens now that we have all these three loras that can be combined there is no problem loras you can combine that and, and so on okay so we have the output here there is no warranty that it will be a better result so let me click here and if I would recall, it was this one, the previous one, same resolution. So, bam, 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 bam. Let me go here, load it. And actually this one have a larger resolution. So look up with the load it. Actually, I can see more details. Now it is adding more details, but I didn't increase the resolution. So let me go back and see if I find <coughs> the one with the same resolution so let me go this one will be okay it's the original one so pretty much should be yeah i think it should be this one yeah so 
take this, take this, put it here, and yeah, we have these two. Original one, node loader, and now we add some loaders, and clearly you can see the different, exactly same model. So the one with the with the loader kind of is adding more details, but it will be more effective with the aux scaler step. But that is the function now with the loader. And let me go here, and we have here, for instance, here I can see some changes, and here also in the skin and so on. So, yeah. <clears throat> so that is the mission of those loaders. So play around, find your best combination, your favorite ones. I already have my favorite ones. And finally, to end here, you know, you can keep playing with this when doing aux scale. In this case, I managed to do it up to 12x. <clears throat> Another video. We're going to address a lot this this extension. Many of them of them are very helpful, and they can speed up things. Sometimes now the difference is not too much when you use it, when you don't use it. So probably I don't recommend to use it. This is very interesting, interesting this one here. But of all these, the, the, the ones that I use the most will be uh, multi-day fusion, this one. <clears throat> and then uh, this one I'm playing a lot. The others, I, I don't touch it too much. Uh, this is already always enabled and then but this one I have been playing a lot and seeing that it can improve a lot the results Especially now when you go to large images But in this case it didn't work. But yeah, this is what I wanted to to show you so basically Just to close here that we went from this result the pixelation to this fantastic result it is a uh, ox scaling or not a scaling is a latent space modification because we did not scale we add at really high denoise and then from this we change the model and then you can go and do the ox scale so this was the one that we went from the pixelation and then we ox scale and we obtain this result and here you can see the difference now so the pixelation and then when you increase so these are the you now those fantastic results that you can see the a minute size in internet basically what you are doing is that i have to admit that yeah there is a lot of black magic behind auctions that you have that you need to control but yeah by playing around you can get there so as i say hardware helps a lot models are very important so 50 percent will be models the other 50 percent will be those hidden auctions and well not need to make no 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 need to mention that the hardware is extremely important. Okay, so thank you for your attention and well, we'll see you in another video, another upscaling video with, we're going to address more advanced stuff, no playing around between XL, stable diffusion, so you can see the difference, how to add control net and so on. So thank you for your attention and see you next time. Bye.